Well, hello everybody. If you've just joined me for my previous video, I just want to say thank you very much. And this time, I'll be showing you how to locate a black hole. Does that seem mad to you? Yes, but I'm going to show you a black hole or a region in space known as Cygnus X1. So for some more exciting astronomy news, please watch this video to find out more. So I've been waiting to share this with you guys for ages, how to observe a black hole. Now I'll be honest with you guys from the start, I personally recommend trying to look for Cygnus X1 during the summer months, but I'm observing now near to December because I was too excited to show you guys, so that's the reason why the summer triangle is setting low in the western skies here. So just to demonstrate what we're talking about here, we are trying to find a black hole. So this is a dense region in space where even light cannot escape, and has even puzzled physicists as to whether black holes can be used as pathways to other parts of our universe, or even be shortcuts to other universes. And it was only around 40 years ago that a scientist known as Tom Bolton was able to find a strong X-ray source emanating from that, the constellation of Cygnus. And it was here where he recognised these strong X-ray sources and was able to find a very unusual orbit of a star known as HDE 226868. Wow, what a mouthful, I know. But it was so important observing the star because it was wobbling. And it puzzled scientists for ages as to why this star was wobbling so much. And eventually Tom Bolton comes to the conclusion that it had an invisible companion, a black hole. So how do we locate it? First of all, we say hello to our celestial lightsaber, our laser pointer, it's very exciting. So, you want to be able to identify the three stars that make up the Summer Triangle, Vega, Deneb and Altair. Deneb is a very important star to help us find this black hole, because it marks the tail of the swan. And in astronomy, we use the Greek alphabet to determine the magnification of stars. In relation to Cygnus, the brightest star is classified as Alpha Cygni, the second brightest Beta Cygni, and so on. What we're trying to do is to find the seventh brightest star, which is known as Eta Cygni, and I'll just locate the position of Eta Cygni for you now. Eta Cygni is found halfway between the body and the head of the swan. When you're looking at Eta Cygni, you're looking at a black hole. Now it's really exciting because there's so much that you can do with this black hole because you don't even need a telescope to be looking in the region of this black hole. So if you guys want to take it to the next level, use a telescope. And please check out my video on how to find a galaxy where I mentioned some of the best astronomy software you can use to locate celestial objects like this black hole. 
the idea here is that you can use this software to create a projected view through an eyepiece. So once you have located Eta Cygni through the view of your eyepiece using a telescope, you'll be able to find the region of HDE226868. So once you're looking at that star, you're looking at the black hole head on. So, how does that make you fit to think you are looking at a black hole? So why not get creative with the black hole? See if you guys can take some still images just using a standard camera. I recommend taking an image of say 30 seconds exposure with a good ISO region between 1600 to 3200. Remember, keep your apertures nice and wide. Try and aim for an aperture higher than f4. And if you guys are able to get an image of Cygnus, please send it in at joshjuryphotomedia at gmail.com. Another way of imaging celestial objects is to use online robotic telescopes from around the globe. I personally recommend that you use the service SLU, where you're able to do just that. So all you need is the coordinates for an object's right ascension and declination. It sounds scary, but it really isn't. It's just the location of celestial objects on a celestial grid, basically. So I'll just include the detailed coordinates for right ascension and declination here if you want to try it. So guys, the most important thing to remember is that to find Cygnus X1, we need to realise the relationship between the rotating Earth and being able to locate some of the major constellations. So I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching this video. Please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to my social media channels to follow my latest work. And here's to clear skies and all the best.